What's up? What's up? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Whatever time it is that you are checking this out, this podcast out, man. I am glad you're here. And we are on our study of Galatians and we're in chapter five and we're just talking about what Paul is actually saying. What message is he conveying to the Galatians? And then what is he saying about God? What is he saying about man? And then how we can apply it to our lives. Hope this is helping you out as you read through whatever you're reading through, as well as as you're listening and we're reading together through Galatians. Yeah, let's see how we can carry these truths out in our lives because that's what's important. In James, it says that we look into the law and we see what manner of man that we are. So that's why we do this, to hear from God, let him tell us who we are, show us who we should be, and then allow the power of the Holy Spirit to do that in our lives. So let's go ahead and jump into chapter five as we read verse one through six. Behold, I say, I'm sorry, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. Behold, I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no benefit to you. And I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is under obligation to keep the whole law. You have been severed from Christ. You who are seeking to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, by faith, are waiting for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything but faith working through love. Paul continuing on after that allegory he had about the bondwoman and the free woman. And the first thing he says, it was Christ who has made you free. That is why you are free. That is why the law is not what constrains you. It was only a tutor to show you to Christ. It says you are free. And he says, therefore, stand firm and don't be subject to that yoke again. That means don't think that your salvation is reliant upon the law because it is not. Your salvation is reliant upon Christ who has set you free. So how can you be chained up again to a law that Christ has set you free from? In Romans, it talks about how Jesus has died and we have died with him. And because we have died with him, we have died to the law and we rise in Christ. And that's what he's saying here, man, is that we are risen in Christ. And as he continues on, he says, behold, uh, he says, uh, but I tell you that if you receive circumcision, Christ is no benefit for you. And he says that because if we think that circumcision, the reason that we receive circumcision is we think there's X that we need to do for salvation. Then it is no Christ. Your salvation is not in Christ anymore. And so because your salvation is not in Christ, then Christ does nothing for you. Remember earlier when we read at the very beginning, it says if there was any way, any possible way that the law could bring us salvation, then Christ died in vain. So that means anything that we do that we think we can gain salvation apart from Christ means that it's vain for the individual. That means that is not truth saving faith. If we don't place our trust, hope, life, and faith in what Christ has done in his resurrection, that's that's full stop. That's it. It is just Faith in Christ's atoning work on the cross and his resurrection. That is all. Now he says, uh, after this, it says that there is no difference between circumcision and uncircumcision. So he's saying it's not that you are circumcised or uncircumcised. It's not that you're a Jew, basically, or a Gentile. We are all equal under Christ. That's what Romans chapter 1 and chapter 2, Paul spent uh, uh, those two chapters speaking about this, that we're all shut up under the law and that only by grace can we all be freed from the law. And there's that language again. We're all chained to the law. We're all slaves to the law. And it's only by Christ Jesus that we are free from the law. That language is used a lot in scripture. It's used a lot because we are slaves to sin till Christ frees us. Till Christ has freed us. So what does it say about about God in this? Well, again, it says that it's only by uh, uh, it's only by the God man Jesus Christ that we can be saved. 
And the implications of that, obviously, is the love that God has for us, the grace that he pours out upon us, the faithfulness that he promised that he would do what he said he was going to do. It also says something about the spirit of God, is that we have the spirit of God with us always in um Corinthians, yeah, in Corinthians, it says that uh, that we are all baptized into one body by the Spirit. And then in Romans, it says that you are sons of God indeed if you have the Spirit. And so God has given us his Spirit to be with us, to strengthen us, to move us, to grow us into the person that God has called us to be. We have that Spirit. What does it say about man? Well, it says that man is equally shut up under the law. Man is equally sinful under the law. See, we have an even playing field because no man can get to Christ. We are all sinners. We are all in need of grace. We are all in need of the salvation of Jesus Christ. So we are on equal footing. It doesn't matter if you come from, in this case, if you come from the Jews, like the the. Uh, I would say privileged people, the ones who received the covenants, the one in which uh, Jesus' lineage came from, the one in which their lineage came from Abraham, the father of the faith. It doesn't matter if you are a, a, a Gentile who came from uh, Roman citizenship or maybe a Greek background or a slave background, a barbarian background. It doesn't matter. That has no bearing as to who you are in this world as it relates to salvation and Christ and the church. No one's privileged. God shows no partiality. For sin is death. So that's one thing it says about man. But uh, what does it say about us? All right, what, what, how do I apply this? I'm sorry. How do I apply this to my life? Well, the, the end says one thing that, that's important to me. It says, but faith working through love. And so it, it is Jesus who saves us through faith. By grace you're saved through faith. And this faith is that God, is it's two ways that it can be taken, I believe. Is that it could be, uh, um, our faith working through God's love, that, that God's love is, is poured out on us through our faith. But it can also be that circumcision or uncircumcision doesn't matter, but if you want to do some type of action, then love. Love your neighbor. Care for your brother and sister. Seek out the oppressed. Help those who are downtrodden. Be with the orphans and the widows. Love your neighbor. It is faith that you are saved. Alone. But in that faith, then love begins to work out. You begin to do action. So that's what I'm, I'm going to do is remind myself. First off, really, I'm going to remind myself that the reason that I am saved is because God loves me. It's always the, the gospel. And if I don't say that every time on this video, then shame on me. Because I want to remind you of your place in Christ Jesus. Your identity in him is that you're saved by grace. And it's not of yourself. So you didn't do anything to get it. God gave it to you. And we should rejoice in that. That there was nothing we could do, yet he would save us. I want to remind you of that every time. Because shame on me if I don't remind myself. That's one thing I need to continually continue to tell myself is who I'm rooted and grounded in Jesus. But then I also do want to say that I need to act out in love. I need to live a life of love, I live a life that is characterized by love, that all I do would be to help grow, support, and make my brothers and sisters look more like Christ because that's what he's called us to. Hey, what are you going to apply uh, today? to this scripture that we've read and how has it helped you out to be able to study through scripture just to understand God a little bit more and figure out what he what he wants to do in our lives because we have a purpose i appreciate you guys for listening and i'll see you tomorrow <laughs>